November last year, many uh, huge international corporations, I think even many of British corporations, published a huge announcement in the Financial Times. Yeah, I, I'm sure that you recall yes. that, that they are very committed with the climate change yes. business. And one way in the last, I think, 15, 10 years, they, are, uh, they show, uh, and this perhaps it goes uh, between commons, and they show that they are committed to the environmental issues, uh, is the policies they called corporate uh, uh, social responsibility policies. How do you analyze this movement? Do you think uh, that something good can uh, emerge for that, for that, or is just propaganda? Some uh, as some publications accuse. How you evaluate this movement? For some, it is just propaganda. For BP or Shell, it is just propaganda. Um, for some other corporations, um, they they really want something. They really want something done. But the real danger in what they're doing is that they're saying that each corporation must be responsible and each person must be responsible. And the difficulty that we have in, in Britain, in Europe now, is that almost everyone knows that there is a problem with climate change, that it is a serious problem. But all of the media and the corporations are telling them that they must that it's you <laughs> and it's me <laughs> and the trouble there is that the solutions I cannot do it and you cannot do it only the the wind power that we need the solar power the wave power the long distance cables the change to public transport the changes to industry only government can do this mm -hmm. only government regulation not not you or me or the corporations. And so we need that. The other thing with the corporations, with that ad in the Financial Times though, is that the, the corporations are very worried now about climate change because they're coming to a new period of investment. The investment, the energy investment in the big power stations, the hydroelectric, the uh, nuclear power, the coal power, the oil-fired power stations, all of that investment is 20, 30, 40 years old. Mm -hmm. They must make new investment now. And this is, these are enormous investments and they make their money back over 30 years. And so they must know, their, their nightmare is that they will build new power stations now and that then when climate change gets much worse, we will change the rules <laughs> on them. And all of their investment will be gone, will be wasted. And so with that ad in the Financial Times, they were saying to the British government, we want you to set better rules now, <laughs> and we want them to last. Uh, we don't want to be trapped. And do you think that somehow this uh, oil barrel almost reaching $200, as some uh, analysts are saying that will probably reach in the next month, can be some kind of uh, artificial force that the, in our societies will, in one way or other, uh, they will must, they will must uh, find new forms of energy, not because they believe that climate change is a real problem, but because they can't afford this way of life? No. Many people hope for that, but no. Mm -hmm. And the reason why no is that there is still coal. Mm -hmm. And in many countries, in Britain, in the United States, in Germany, in China, the government is changing from natural gas-fired power stations, which is the cleanest fossil fuel, they're changing to coal. And that is even more carbon pollution. And also, there is now great investment in Oil, oil tar, oil shale mm -hmm. in Canada and some in Venezuela. And again, that, rep that is enormous emitters of carbon. So no, it will, the rising, the scarcity of oil will see more wars like Iraq. <laughs> it, will have, it will see the price of food go up. It has very important consequences, but it does not solve this problem. My dream is this. Look back to World War II. In World War II, every great power changed their economy 
to make as many guns and tanks and airplanes as possible mm -hmm. to kill people to win the war. Mm -hmm. What we need is the same action by governments but to save lives. We need wind farms, we need solar power, we need long distance power cables to bring solar power from the Sahara to Europe, um, from Western China to Eastern China. We need public transport. We need to stop using cement. Um, we need insulation of buildings, proper building uh, changes to buildings. We need all of this. And this is millions and millions and millions of jobs <laughs> across the world. That's what we need. When they did in the Second World War, when they had massive programs for arms, they took the whole world out of the Great Depression. And it can be the same thing. There are, uh, that's that's my ideal.